Now at 4.30 on WKYT this morning, a death investigation is underway in Bath County after a man was found dead in his home. Authorities tell us it looks suspicious. Witnesses say they did what they could to help. We'll tell you about a crash in Matt Montgomery County that killed one person and injured two others. And at least nine people are dead after a shooter opened fire in a church in downtown Charleston, South Carolina. The Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you. A tragic scene there in South Carolina, and the details are coming up shortly. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Let's get over to Micah to get a check of the weather and what's in store. Yeah, no rain walking outside this morning. There's some good news. The bad news is we'll have additional rounds of showers and thunderstorms as we slide into the afternoon. It has been extremely spotty, meaning you could have one shower, one thunderstorm. Here you go five miles down the road, and you don't see anything at all. I mean, yesterday I didn't get any rain at my house except during the morning hours, afternoon, but I could see the thunderstorms to the left and the right of me just passing right by me. And that's just the way it's been. Temperatures sitting there in 60s and 70s, that's the way it's going to be today. More storms in the forecast. Some will get them, some will not. We'll be at 88 degrees, so that heat is still there along with that humidity. Then we start to focus on what's left over from Tropical Storm Bill as we slide towards your weekend. A lot of rain or just a little rain. I'll have that coming up. Micah, thank you. This morning here at WKYT, we're tracking a breaking news alert out of Charleston, South Carolina. That's where at least nine people are dead after a man opened fire during a prayer meeting inside a historic black church. The police chief is calling the attack a hate crime. The gunman still at large. CBS's Brian Webb has the latest developments from Charleston. People gathered together in prayer in Charleston overnight as authorities search for a man who police say shot and killed at least nine people at a Bible study hours before. This is a most unspeakable and heartbreaking tragedy. The shooting happened at the Emanuel AME Church in downtown Charleston Wednesday night, one of the oldest black churches in the nation. The police chief described the attack as a hate crime and says the FBI will be part of the investigation. It is unfathomable that somebody in today's society would walk into a church when people are having a prayer meeting and take their lives. The suspect is described as a slender, clean-shaven, white, 21-year-old male with sandy blonde hair wearing a gray sweatshirt and jeans. The incident was followed by a bomb threat that complicated the investigation. That threat has since been called off. These people were in church. In they were church. in church. In church. And they, were, and, that, and they violated the sanctity of that. The church is led by Reverend Clemente Pinckney, a Democratic member of the state Senate who was reportedly in the church at the time. So far, authorities haven't released the victims' identities. Brian Webb for CBS News. Well, the police chief there says there were some survivors, but it's not at this point known how many. In a statement early this morning, Governor Nikki Haley asked everyone to, quote, please join us in lifting up the victims and their families with our love and prayers. We'll stay on top of that story throughout the morning. Meanwhile, we're tracking a developing story this morning out of Bath County here in Kentucky. Investigators say a man was found dead in his home, and it appears to be suspicious. State police say someone found the man's body last night at a home on Wyoming Road near the Fleming County line. Police say the person who found the body had gone to the home to check on the man after not hearing from him for a while. They say it does not appear the man died of natural causes. We've made several calls to officials overnight so far. They have not released the man's name nor the cause of his death. We're continuing to track the investigation here on WKYT this morning. Well, some folks nearby tell us they heard a loud noise and quickly realized something terrible had happened. This morning, we're learning more about a deadly crash on a Montgomery County road. Investigators say one person died. Two others were injured yesterday afternoon when a car and truck collided on Highway 11 north of Mount Sterling. WKYT's Garrett Weimer talked to some witnesses. They didn't want it, but folks inside the Judy store had a front row seat to a terrible scene after a truck crossed the center line and hit a car head on. We were just working and heard a loud, went a crash, it was like an explosion, and we looked and seen the truck flying through the air, and we ran out there to see if we could help any of them. It was too late for one man, the driver of the car, who the sheriff says was pronounced dead at the scene. He was in his lane. 
uh, the truck for some reason crossed over and struck him head on. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, how do you avoid that? You know, I mean, you, you, you want to, you get up in the morning, you want to go to town, do you expect to come back home? Sheriff Shortridge says the two people inside the truck were taken to the hospital. Folks in the area say something needs to be done here because crashes in this spot are far too common. It's just a blind spot there and people just don't see and they don't they need to slow down. As for what they did see happen here, Pergram says it's something she'll never forget. I hope I never have to go through that again or see another family have to go through that again. In Montgomery County, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. The name of the man who died has not been released. There's still no word on the condition of the other two people inside the truck. We are continuing to track the latest after a deadly motorcycle crash in Madison County. State police say 40-year-old Charles Arvin of Richmond was killed. Yesterday afternoon, Arvin lost control of his motorcycle on Union City Road, crossed the center line, and hit an SUV. He died at the scene. The driver of the SUV was not injured. This morning, a man injured in a strange hit and run is now out of the hospital and facing charges. Theophilus Price Jr. was arrested last night. He is charged with complicity to wanton endangerment. Price was riding in an SUV with Daniel Blackburn Tuesday night when investigators say he decided to smack someone walking down US 25. Police say as Blackburn pulled closer, Price leaned out of the window, but his head smacked into the head of the person walking as they drove past. Both Price and the person walking were injured and taken to the hospital. Investigators say this was an unusual case. We see people live through things that you would think there's no way they can live through it. And we've seen people die that probably should have never died. Police, police later arrested Blackburn. They have charged him with DUI, wanton endangerment, and leaving the scene of an accident. They say he admitted drinking four large beers. Police say they also found blood in his passenger seat. Well, this morning we are tracking a crime alert in Winchester. Police say nearly two dozen people woke up and found their cars had been broken into. The cars were parked outside homes in the Holiday Hills area and Wind Ridge Drive. Winchester police say the thieves stole anything valuable they could find in those cars, including some firearms. We're dealing with firearms uh, or electronic devices that may have personal information on them. You know, it's a felony to, to steal a firearm. So we've got three different felonies right now because we've got three different victims that had handguns taken. Police say so far they have not made any arrests in this. And with no witnesses, they don't have a really good uh, description of the thieves. Police think that they work together as a group, checking door handles to find unlocked cars. 4.38 the time on WKYT this morning. Fayette County Schools are a step closer to finding a new superintendent. Two of the finalists for the job will be interviewed next week. School leaders say each candidate will spend a day and a half in Lexington. They will both tour the schools and meet with school employees and members of the community. The school district has not released the name of any finalist because a search firm is still doing background checks. This morning, hundreds of people in Clark County are being told to boil their water. Kentucky American Water has issued a boil water advisory for its nearly 300 customers out in the county. The water company says this is related to a water main break within the Winchester Municipal Utilities water system. New this morning, the U.S. Treasury Department has announced that it is redesigning the $10 bill to feature a woman. The new bill will roll out five years from now in 2020. That's the 100th anniversary of the Constitution's 19th Amendment, which gave women the right to vote. A decision on who that woman will be won't be made for several months, but the Treasury Secretary asking the public for input. You can give them ideas by using the hashtag, the new 10. I believe it was the 20, right, that there was that uh, movement that they wanted Andrew Jackson off the $20 right. bill and a, a woman, but I guess they've decided on the $10 bill. Okay, so <laughs> we'll see how that goes in 2020. Well, WKYT this morning is just getting started. It's good to have you along with us. More news on the way. Do not forget about Dad. Moms Every Day has some great Father's Day gift ideas later in the show. And we're looking across the region, not seeing much going on, but as we hit the afternoon, more showers, more thunderstorms in the forecast, and your weekend rain, it will be there. I'll show you that forecast coming up next.